RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. In short, RFID means a technology that makes it possible to transfer all sorts of data in an invisible way and without physical contact of the two objects. It is used today in various arrays. In libraries, RFID can simplify daily processes. In companies, RFID can make production and delivery more efficient. Some countries use RFID to manage their toll roads. Others use it on public transport for payments. Some are also implementing RFID chips in passports. Currently, RFID chips identify pets and domestic animals, but there are rare cases when these chips are even implanted into human bodies. It is staggering how fast RFID systems have developed. Today's chips are sometimes no bigger than a grain of rice. This is also what makes many people scared or insecure. Most arguments against RFID relate to information privacy, some associate it with Big Brother type control. This leads to a push for a strict regulation for the technology. Implementing RFID into libraries is part of this controversial discussions. But to understand the real possibilities, opportunities and threats of a new technology, people have to know the purpose behind it. Basically, an RFID system consists of a transponder and a reader. The transponder, librarians mostly call it tag, is placed into the object about which it should deliver data. There are three different kinds of tags. Active ones have an internal power supply to deliver and receive data wherever they are. Semi-active tags can only send data when they get into the range of an electromagnetic field. The tags used in libraries are mostly passive. They don't have any kind of internal power supply so that they can only send and receive data when in the range of an electromagnetic field provided by a so-called reader. So, the reader doesn't only work as a power supply, it also transmits the information sent by the tech to the computer. But which information is stored on the tech? What does it tell the computer and what information does the system manage based on the information received? In principle, the quantity of data storable on the tech depends on the tech himself, but libraries mostly act in accordance with the Danish data model. This defines exactly what information should be stored on the tech to avoid data privacy violation. This information consists of the stages of this tech, if it is inactive or active, the kind of tech being used, the data model, which tells the reader in what language the data must be decoded, and the item ID, which is comparable with former barcode numbers. The number of items the medium consists of, the part number, the country of the owner library and the owning library itself. This information is transferred from the tech to the reader invisibly and without physical contact. When users borrow a book via an RFID system, they first need to identify themselves at the self-check-in. This could be done via an RFID card or a barcode or a username. Afterwards, they choose to check out one or more books and put these books onto a table equipped with an RFID reader. The tag in the book sends the necessary information to the RFID reader, which then transfers it to the computer system. The following steps are comparable with the traditional checkout process. The computer system saves the information about which books the user has borrowed, disables the security warning and changes the status information to borrowed. In contrast to traditional checkout methods, this process can be done with many books in one step. The system works similarly at the book drop station. Here, the books can be returned without interaction with a librarian. So, if these stations are placed outside of the library, users can return books anytime they want. Just as a checkout, the RFID reader transfers the necessary data to the computer. The system acknowledges the return of the book and changes the user's entries as well as the security information and the book stages. The user, as normally, gets a receipt at the end, but the great advantage of the RFID system happens behind the scenes. 
Formerly, returned books had to be stored until library staff were ready to reshelf them. RFID allows systems not only to sort the books correctly, but to transfer them to the right general location, even to other floors. Library staff only have to take them out of the box and to put them into the bookshelf. There are other advantages that can be implemented through RFID. For example, librarians can make their oversight tasks more efficient. Portable readers can note the placement of the books and sound an alert if any book or medium is out of place. The inventory of the library can thus be implemented more easily and quickly. The system can also be used to find special books by just specifying the book's ID and running the hand reader along the bookshelves. Since RFID is rather new, some librarians doubt its efficiency and prefer to rely on their human capabilities. Of course, RFID is not yet flawless, but the goal is to be able to check 20 books per second, which is much faster than with the human eye. RFID also makes it easier to recognize possible losses through shelf reading and through anti-theft detection. Up to now, libraries just noticed that something has been stolen. Through RFID, they can know which exact item has been lost and replace it without inventorying the whole library. For libraries, RFID offers lots of advantages. It simplifies and speeds daily processes, and this relieves librarian staff to do other tasks. But libraries should not use the reductions to cut jobs. This idea scares library staff and matters for users who want to be able to stay in contact with information professionals. Librarians are not only there to lend books, they provide information and give advice that books and computer cannot give. In any case, users can benefit broadly from RFID systems. By saving time with the checkout system, libraries could expand their opening hours and, if situated correctly, readers can return books at the book drop whenever they want. They can also gain from advanced services provided by librarians who now have time to enhance their service offerings. In this way, RFID shows great promise for the future libraries. Users as well as librarians should be enlightened about all aspects of this new technology. We must take the threat out of this new way of managing libraries. As the American Library Association suggests, with any new application of technology, libraries should strive to develop best practices to protect user privacy and confidentiality.